Like you want your kitchen done. You want your floors done. Like you need to hire somebody you trust. If, if, if everybody that walks in your door, you're automatically scared. They're going to take advantage of you. They're going to hurt you. I'm not that person. And if you're not going to give me the ability to earn your trust, then I don't want your business. This is a marriage. This is when, when there's a problem, there's something that we need to figure out. We need to sit down at the table and work it out because I can't fix it if, there, if I don't know what it is. What's up, guys? Welcome to a special edition of the Blue Collar Boardroom. Today, I've got one of Naples' finest remodeling contractors. Look, lots of guys, exterior contractors, are missing out on huge money selling multi, like, trade big interior rebuild projects. This man right here in Naples adds millions of dollars in value for hundreds of thousands of dollars in jobs. So he'll walk into someone's home and close them on a $250,000 kitchen. More importantly, um, inside this episode, you're going to hear a a man's story. Uh, I met John Huffman in my Muay Thai fitness gym. We all work out together in Cosmos class. And John, he's in here and he's lost a lot of weight here recently, been in the last year, really evolving as a fighter and really evolving in business as well. And, you know, he's been at rock bottom before and really came from where a lot of us contractors come from, a place where no one expects us to be a real success. Amazing. And now, man, he's making a difference in his community. He leads the youth and, and, and pastors a lot of people here in Naples, and he's on a mission um, to uh, spread the good word, but also to improve people's lives in all different ways along the way. So my man, John Huffman, is the man yeah, to man. learn from. What's up, man? None, man. I, I appreciate you inviting me on here, man. Well, uh, I'm really curious about, you know, the, the nitty gritty side of the story. We, we, you know, yeah. we always kind of touch on it. And, you know, yeah, man. where do you come from, you know? Well, I was born and raised right here in Naples. Okay. And uh, Golden Gate City. And, you know, Naples gets overlooked a lot, man. You know, everybody thinks Naples, they automatically think Port Royal, they automatically think West of 41. Mm -hmm. But there's kids growing, going to bed hungry here in our community. And a lot of times it's hard to get those dollars to even, um, you know, help support it because everybody thinks, well, it's Naples. Naples already has all the dollars. There's no, nobody's struggling in Naples, but but there is. And I, I was one of those growing up. My mom, um, my mom was a crack cocaine user. And uh, father really wasn't around. I think they divorced when I was around six. So I always uh, make the joke, uh, DJJ or call your county sheriff's department was my daddy. <laughs> oh, God. That's, a, that's tough. But uh, the cool part now is, you know, I had a cop the other day. Uh, not the other day. Probably about four or five months ago. Call me a cop that used to harass me, so to speak. That's what I used to call it, harass me, but he was doing his job. Actually called me the other night, and he texts me, messaged me on Facebook and goes, hey, man, I really need you to call me. So automatically my heart drops. I'm going, which one of my kids are freaking jacked up? I'm going to choke one of them. And uh, I call him. I go, hey, man, what, what's going on? He goes, hey, I, you know, one of my family members is really going through it, man. I was wanting to know if you could just reach out to them and, you know, maybe you could get them some help, man. And I just I started tearing up right things. So I'm thinking, wow, here here I am, uh, a guy that now people are reaching out to 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 go back into the trenches and pull their young people out. Um, so it's just really cool, man, to, to have that happen feeling? in my life. I got to oh, drop man. a bomb on that one. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> You know, it's almost like when someone, no way I'm going to do business with you. It has yeah. all kinds of objections, but you turn them around. Do you, do you love it when the oh. people have no intentions of buying, but then they buy? It's almost my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> what do you love most? I mean, that, that's one of my things is going in there and, and you know, showing my passion and, mm -hmm. you know, having people having that standoff thing. I've always tell people that, like this all the time, like, hey, you know, this is a marriage, right? If, if I'm going to come in here and I'm automatically the bad guy, this marriage isn't going to work out. Like you want your kitchen done. You want your floors done. Like you need to hire somebody you trust. If, if, if everybody that walks in your door, you're automatically scared. They're going to take advantage of you. They're going to hurt you. I'm not that person. And if you're not going to give me the ability to earn your trust, then I don't want your business. This is a marriage. This is when, when there's a problem, there's something that we need to figure out. We need to sit down at the table and work it out because 
I can't fix it if there, if I don't know what it is. And automatically you watch that. We gotta relief. drop another bomb on that one, <laughs> like my man Bradley does. Because, dude, I'm telling you, the takeaway, taking control. I'll call that one taking control with the takeaway. Yeah, it's, it's huge, man, and and it's letting people know that you're human too. And I always try to set expectations now too. Listen, things are gonna go wrong, but there's one promise I can make. We're gonna fix them. We're gonna make it go right. I'm not gonna come in here and tell you that I'm the best contractor in the world and I'm just perfect because there's only one person that walked on water and his name was Jesus. It wasn't John Huffman, <laughs> you know. So, but the promise I can make is it's gonna we're gonna make it right. You See, know? I love those things. That applies to all contracting uh, salespeople. It doesn't matter if you're selling HVAC. Uh, you talked about building a lifetime relationship. Yeah, I always man. talk about uh, you know, being a contractor for life, a marriage. Right. But then you take away immediately. You're like, only for a certain few people that will give me the respect. Yeah. You know? And you know, I think a lot of times people are out there begging. And that's what do you think that does with customers? Well, automatically, because John Huffman 10 years ago was that guy. Okay. Right? So I was the beggar. Yes. Can we do that? Yes. Can we do that? Yeah. Uh, your, your allowance is $5. Well, I want $7. Uh, okay. I, I'll make it work. No. Listen, you need me like I need you. So I think when you go in there begging, you automatically give them the upper hand. You know, and you automatically, th this is a level playing field, right? Again, back to that marriage, 100%, 100%. When I'm coming in to sell a place, like you need my assistance. If you want two men in a trunk, then go find two men in a trunk. If you want solutions and a good product, I'm here. So you want solutions and a good product? You need me just like I need you. I need the money and the cash flow. You need solutions and a product. We're in a marriage. We're together. Dude, we need to make a, a inside sales closing course uh, with some of your closes for high ticket remodeling projects. Yeah, man. I think that'd be great. Oh, uh, I would love that. Uh, let's uh, get into like going from troubled teen and and to starting a business and and how that. How, how, how'd you get into the business? Man, you know, um, I got into construction because uh, this is funny, but it's true because you could drink beer and smoke weed at break, right? <laughs> I like that part of construction too, dog. I mean, that's just the truth. Um, drop out, all that. It was like the only, the only job you could really get in with, with my roughness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, in and out of jail, the whole, the whole thing. And I, I found Christ, man, and he really just changed me and, you know, set me on fire for, for doing the right thing, regardless of what someone thinks about me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing the right thing. I should be able to sit at the dinner table and brag to my kids what I did that day. I don't care if it's working at 7-Eleven and sweeping the floor. I'm going to brag to my kids. No one swept that floor better than daddy did, right? Mm -hmm. And just not being insecure of who I am. And when I found my identity in Christ, that's the confidence that I had. And, uh, you know, me and my wife, we were struggling, um, I think we had four hundred dollars in the bank, and I was working for a painter. And I'm like, babe, I, I really, I really want to go out on my own. I'm, I, I swear I can be somebody. And and she's like, baby, I already know. I'm just grateful that you have nothing, so I can watch God give us everything, right? And uh, she pushed me out, man. Four hundred bucks in the bank. She said, go. That's how you know you got a good one. She said, go, man. And we haven't looked back. And I'm just taking that same zealousness. Now, here's the cool part about how I sell too. And me and you were just talking about this before. It's like I've got to learn me before I can teach other people. Well, because I started construction at the broom, I've laid the tile, I've swept the floor, I've framed the walls, I've, I've done it all. So when I go in and I sell a unit, I'm not just there selling you a pretty kitchen. I know why that kitchen's going to work, where that stack is, why that drain needs to be there, why that column's right there, why you can't move that column, why you can't move your doors, why you can. Or if you do want to move your doors, how to do it. It's not just well, this would look good. So I always tell people that too. And even my own kids get mad at me because I make them start from the bottom. And it's because of that reason right there. I want you to understand what you're actually selling, what you're actually doing. So you have pride in it. You're not just doing it. So I took being a broom pusher, smoking weed and drinking beer and meeting Christ and letting those things go and building a company. And now that I'm selling my passion and you know, I love watching life transform. Mm -hmm. I love watching people go from the gutter like I did and then all of a sudden start shining. And I do that at homes too. I love going in a home and seeing the bones and seeing something in the 70s and 80s and then bringing it 
bringing it to life and watching it transform. It's amazing, brother. Yeah, it's, man. It's something else, man. And, and I just feel in your energy, man. It's so inspiring. Uh, I know how hard you work in the gym. Yeah, I can only imagine what kind of heart you put out there in business. But I know uh, a lot of times, you, you know, being this guy who's the salesman, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're like me. Uh, you know, you're out there. Your gift is gab. Your gift yeah, is sure. energy. But it's not always organization. It's not always structure. It's not always process. And so you, you've, you've hit a brick wall in that before, haven't oh, you? Oh, for sure. You talk about some of those different areas. Oh yeah, man. You know, and, and, you know, we were, we were talking about even Bryce with, with Vanguard, man. And, and that's why, you know, I love him so much because, you know, I am a visionary and, and I get, I get bogged down in the gears. You know, I can cast the vision. I'm very broad sided. And I'm, I'm jump off the mountain and build the plane on the way down. Mm -hmm. Right. But you need them people in your life that says, well, hold on, let me count the bolts and make sure the right parts are here when you jump off this mountain. So you have enough parts. Um, because guys like me and you, and I mean, I train with you in the gym and it's like, anytime we're about to spar with Lee, we're like, put on 80, put on 80. <laughs> Lee's going to tell you 50, but we going 80 or you got to go 80 to keep up. And it's the same thing. You know, you got me as hard as you want. <laughs> you got to go. Yeah. I hit you with a right cross the other day and you ate it. You smiled at me, man. Thanks a lot for that. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, that's the same thing. So it's important to have those people in your life that compliment you, man. Uh, I always say this, I'm not that smart, but I, I'm smart enough to put smart people around me, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, man. So, um, you know, that, that brings me to an important point, you know, um, this, this system for getting control of your business, mm -hmm. you know, and, and getting control of your time and building and selling, you know, you start getting jobs and then you have to produce them and then sales go down. Yes. And then you, one day you have sales problems, the next day you have production problems. What, what do you, have you ever experienced that? Yeah, I call it the roller coaster. Yeah. Um, and and what, what I've learned is how that happens is if you're selling and then you're doing, mm -hmm. and then you're selling and then you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you've got to figure out like what you teach, man. Look, at this is my sales process, and then let people do who do. Because, it, you know, if, if I'm selling and I get a bunch of work, but then I got to go out there and figure out how to get the work done, Mm -hmm. Well, my sales are going to drop. So I have to sell constantly mm -hmm. and I have to put the right people around me to get the work done and find those right teams because, and that's most small business owners. They're in the business, not on their business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they're scared to throw that money at people. I tell people all the time, I didn't grow until I started paying the leads of the world to teach me what they've learned from and paying the leads of the world to teach me the mistakes that they've known. So I don't make them, you know, because if you're making them all on your own, you're never going to grow. Grow, you're, you're going to stay in that little bubble or you're going to make some terrible mistakes and learn from it. And what mistakes do is they cost. Amen. And they cost, and you can talk about sales cures all woes, but no one wants to waste a good sell when you don't have the right process. And that's Amen. one thing about Bryce is, you know, we all work out together in the morning. A lot of times there's a mastermind that goes along our workouts mm. at the end of our workouts. We're talking about business, yep. we're talking about growth. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's the traction process. Mm -hmm. And how has that helped you? And what, what do you use as far as, you know, how's Bryce helped you? Yeah. How does that how does that work in your business? Oh, man, it's it's grown me tremendously. It's given me the ability to know that you need a system so that you have residuals. Uh, again, working on it, not in it. And accountability because I'm the sales guy. Mm -hmm. And sales fix everything. Mm -hmm. in, in my world, that's how it was. If, if I had a bad month, I went and sold more. Right. Right? And, and, and the bank account went up because that, that's the truth. And as long as we got work, we're not dead. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've heard plenty of people say, well, that person's going under. He's got, he's got, he's still got 2 million on the books of work. He ain't under yet. Right. Right. There, there's no way he's going under. He's still got work to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, and that was my concept, but you know, hanging out with guys like Bryce, breaking it down, sales and marketing operations, finances, tracking your numbers weekly, knowing if you're hitting your goals or not. Because here's the, here's the truth. Numbers don't lie. I can look at my bank account and have $500,000, $700,000 in it, but how much is that really mine? Is that me just grinding and running my mouth? Because I can sell t you know, $5 million of work and have 30% of that sitting in my bank, but how much is my actual, actual profitable from that? And do I have the right people in the right places making me money? Because a lot of times, if you are good at sales, people that are very good at sales, if they don't have the right people in the right places, they're bleeding and they don't even know it because sales is fixing it. And if we have a recession or we have a moment where sales stop and you've got to start paying out that money and you don't have that cash flow, well, now you're in big trouble. And that's when you find out how long and how much you are bleeding.
Amen. And what I love most about this is like you learned it from with your hands. And yeah. I think that America has kind of looked down at like the blue collar trades. They stopped doing yeah. shop class. They stopped doing apprenticeships. It and it's almost like you can start with your hands and then learn how to sell it. And it's almost yeah. like you're, you're better skilled. But the problem is, is like now you got specific people that you're trying to bring in to tell, mm-hmm. sell something, teach all your knowledge. It's mm-hmm. hard to duplicate you. Yeah. And when people in your position come to me, Mm-hmm. And they say, Lee, help me hire people. They might think, Lee, your business is easier to onboard people in. Yeah. And maybe they're a little bit right. But, you know, what struggles have you had in, in hiring and duplicating yourself? It, it all boils down to pride and ego first, mm-hmm. right? Because in the, in, for all you business owners out here listening to this that, you know, you're going home and you're ticked off and you're going, if I don't do it, it's not done right. Like that's pride. Yeah. It's, it's straight pride. Um, because you are replaceable and you're not the only one. Are you different? Are you separate? Yes. But what I've learned is this, if I take the time and the effort to train, I can duplicate me. Amen. And here's the other it thing. It takes longer. And I've got to be okay with them outselling me too. Yeah. So that's what that eat, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. a lot of guys, they see that star and all of a sudden their ego gets in. Now Now they, they don't even like the guy no more. Or they get ticked off at the salesman that works eight hours, uh, four hours, and he's up there with his feet up, but he's just sold five million. Who gives a crap if his feet are up? He just sold five million for you. Take your ego and shove it somewhere. I've seen that countless times in businesses, countless times. Yeah, um, Jocko always talks about this, and you know the reality is is that so many contractors choke out the growth of their business because they have a hard time letting go. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> why do you think you hold on? It's it, you built it. It's your baby, uh-huh. you know. And and you know, I, I've I've had mentors. I I started putting people in my life, you know, other entrepreneurs and leaders. And, and understanding what I just said, like, dude, that's pride and ego, bro. No one like, is half the battle. Doing's a different thing, yeah, right? Correct. And, uh, you know, and understanding that everybody's going to do it the exact same way with you, and that's okay. Yeah. But if it's getting done, let it get done. Well, it's almost like the system evolves. If they do it a little differently and better, they do it like you want it, but a little bit better. Right. And this guy comes along, and it just continues to get better and better. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's almost like you have to be comfortable hiring people them being 50% as good as you and you know you train them they may make a lot of mistakes they might get 70% as good as, as good as you 80% as good as you um eventually though you want to build a brand and yeah. so that the people that you hire for each specific things are way better than you yeah in each department and as your company grows one of the benefits of being big and being known the overhead is kind of frustrating but yes. people come to you Mm-hmm. And the best opportunities come to you. Yeah. And in all different areas. That's one of the good things about growth. Mm-hmm. Now, um, you know, talking about working with contractors, you've had the opportunity to help Bryce after he's helped you with uh, implementing the traction process. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so uh, what, what's some of the struggles you see other contractors uh, face implementing this? It, it's, it's, it's so funny you say that because, um, you know, whether they're a pest service, mm-hmm. a roofer, or an AC company, when we're pulling all that woes out of them, and it, it's the same. It, everybody has people problems, mm-hmm. right? And, and again, what I found out is a lot of times the people problems aren't the people. It's the owners. Mm-hmm. It's the key players that aren't spending the time to train them. They're setting them up for failure. There's, they, 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 they say this is your position, but they don't say everything in their position. They don't set the expectations. I always say this. You look at Chick-fil-A, right? Mm-hmm. Every, time, every time you drive by Chick-fil-A, there's a line out the dang door down the street. But if you pull into that line, you got your food within like four minutes. You're like, wow. Then you go, who's running Chick-fil-A? A bunch of teenagers. How the heck is teenagers running a multi-million dollar business? They take four weeks to train them before mm-hmm. they ever let them out on the floor. Mm-hmm. And those people know their expectations. If they're the ice cream person, they know what to do. If they're the line person, they're, they're setting those expectations, but they're taking the time. And what us contractors do a lot is we hire, you're a key player, I'm going to throw money at you, this is, that, that salary's good, figure it out. And then 
we set them up for failure because we don't set those expectations. Well, great minds think alike because uh, basically we broke the internet. A lot of people had a lot of negative commentary when I said our gold standard is Chick Fil A and we will be the Chick Fil A of roofing. Come on, somebody! People, people <laughs> said this guy's just a salesman. All yeah. he does is care about making money. He's no way the character and process of Chick Fil A. And I'm like, okay, not yet. Whatever. Obviously, no yeah. one else is is there. Yeah, and I'm obviously got a long ways to go. Right, but since that day. Uh, uh, to see where the company is and to know I have a, a I get a lifetime of improvement that the journey yeah. is never done Amen. that that I that a lot of times people look at it and they're like frustrated where they are and I pat myself on the back and I say dude you're right where you're supposed to be come on I mean, you know God has me here for a reason yeah man and um, you know the, the 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 reality is you can have big goals but also be grateful at the same time right and I think so many people live in this world where it's so frustrating to see. Other people who may have been more privileged or had advantages, look, I had an advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad taught me how to sell when mm -hmm. I was young. I had my first home improvement door-to-door -door sell at like 14, 15 years old. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and so I had trouble growing up, and I had a bunch of things I screwed up with, failing out of college and being an idiot. Yeah. But I had a family business to get into at 18, and I've been doing this for a long yeah. time with a right. coach. Yeah. And, hey, man, I, I – I, I will say thank my lucky stars, but right. what I would like to do is give back. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, people like get frustrated. They start comparing. Yes. And it's like you don't know the whole story. Right. And, you know, for me, I look at you being able to make a million bucks off of maybe even doing like 20 jobs. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, was, talk about the benefits of these big booms in Naples and some of your project and what yeah. you got going on here. Yeah, man. I mean, the renovation business is nice. You know, I mean, you're going in there and and let's just be honest. If if you're rent, if you're rehabbing your house, you know, they're wealthy people. Mo, mo, most of my clients are wealthy. And the other cool thing is, most of my clients are me in thirty years mm -hmm. or twenty years. They're you entrepreneurs, and you know what I mean. They're 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 not buying a house on Gulf Shore Boulevard because they were just born in. No, they were entrepreneurs. They were key players. They were CEOs. So. I also get I also am smart enough to build a relationship with them to hear their woes and how they got there and what they've done. But um I mean the margins are also good, but again, if you don't have the right people in the right places, I don't I don't care if, if you get a million dollars for a two hundred thousand dollar job. Just so you know, you Gulf Shore believe. Boulevard is a, is a there's forty five million dollar lots, there's hundred million dollar <laughs> homes. The guy who owns this building we're in lives there, he's worth close to seven hundred million bucks. <laughs> You know, and so stupid you, money. It's you know these guys that do these uh, four hundred thousand dollar improvements and add millions of dollars of value in home. Yeah, and man. Are they demanding? Well, boundaries. And, and and again, I was saying that before we started the podcast. John, three years ago or five years ago, isn't John today? Mm -hmm. uh, I set my boundaries. I I and you know what? And what I've learned when I set my boundaries is they respect me. I, I just want a job. The, the lady told me, well, I've already got this person. I've already got this person. And she's, you know, wanted to play contractor, so to speak. And I put my hand out and she like looked at me and says, I'm just not the contractor for you. And she goes, well, hold on. Hold well, on. Why, why would you say that? And I go, well, look, if you're hiring me, you're hiring my team. And what, this is why. I don't mean to bound. I, I know that sounds very rude, but let me explain why. Because my team knows what to expect from me, and I know what to expect from my team. And if you bring in part of your team and things go wrong, they're pointing at me. And if things go wrong at me, I'm pointing at them. Now I've got finger pointing on a million-dollar job, and I'm, I can't afford finger pointing. So if you hire me, you trust me. You hire me to trust me to hire my team. And I got awarded the job for that. And most people, when I tell that story, like, you said what? On a million dollar price? Yeah, I've got to set my boundaries because this is the truth. I can stay at home and not make no money. And if you think you can't get a million dollar job and lose money, you don't know business. So you've got to set those boundaries. And again, we're not dealing with people that are retiring from Publix. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with entrepreneurs. We're dealing with people that they looked at, she looked at me and she said, she's seen it. Okay, this guy's got confidence. And I do, not because I've got confidence and I'm cocky, well, I know God's got me first, but because I have confidence in what I know and I've been down that road where I've let the client dictate who I use and it was a mess. Mm -hmm. So I can either learn from my lesson and receive it as a blessing, or I can just keep dealing with that same lesson over and over and then wondering why I can't make no money and wondering why I'm always stressed. So setting those boundaries, yes, they're demanding, but if you got your ducks in a row and you set boundaries, no, absolutely not. 
So now I kind of want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, your improvements in your physical life, Mm -hmm. you know, because you had big uh, accomplishments in business. You had a lot of impact in church with a lot of lives. Yeah, man. Um, But then what made you make a new commitment for this, the the rest of? The truth is my family, man. You know, um, uh, two things happened. Um, You know, I I was making money. I mean, you know, um, my wife kind of convicted me, and this is for all you other business owners out there too, man. Like, you know, money doesn't mean nothing if your if your kids don't know who you are, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and uh, you know that was one of the things. But then my health was getting so far away. I went to Wyoming to go skiing, mm-hmm. and I couldn't find. I didn't bring a ski pair of ski pants. I never went skiing before, so I just was gonna buy them when I went up there. And I couldn't find a pair to fit me, and I realized something: fat people don't ski, <laughs> you know. And if they do, they gotta have. It was embarrassing. I was embarrassed. So then I went on a keys trip next, and this guy pulls up. We're snorkeling, right? Guy pulls up. I don't know, million dollar plus boat, four four hundreds, booming system, grandkids on the boat. He's so big, he he sat behind the wheel the whole time while his grandkids were having fun, and I and even maybe sixty, and I thought to myself, what good is all that wealth if I can't get in the water with my grandkids and enjoy them? Mm. So I was like 250 pounds, man. Mm. And uh, I was just like, man, you know what? I want to be here for my kids. I want to be here for my grandkids. And then I want to start prioritizing me so that I can be a good father for my my kids too when I get home. Mm-hmm. The other night, my daughter, I got home at 930. I, I, I did an event and then I went and preached, a youth event. I was preaching at Lee, Lee, uh, Lee High School to some young youth, preaching to them. And I got home at 930 and my daughter's like, dad, you want to hit the pads? Bro, you need to take, I went and hit the pads with my kid because I got a 10 year old asking me to go hit pads and spend time with dad. Mm -hmm. That's what's important. But, but John, a year ago with my health by nine o'clock, I'm done. I done had three McDonald's cheeseburgers. Mm -hmm. I, I, I I ate terrible. I did. If I ate it all that day and when I did eat, it was the worst food ever. Mm -hmm. By the time I got home, I was aggravated, tired, and it was bedtime. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you tell your 10 year old no to pads. Well, eventually she quits asking you. Right. So, I mean, that was the main thing, man, is, you know, health is important, man. You, you hit a rock bottom, but then you did something about it. Amen. What'd That's you do? True. What'd you do? Put my feet to it. <laughs> yeah, well, I think you, didn't you, like, pay for a bunch of privates and commit to, what? Oh, what, that's huge. Tell, yeah. Tell me that's a big deal, right? Oh, no, that's huge. You created a new relationship. Oh, that's huge. Well, and and that's what's huge Plus, about you could, having. You could have just come to the class, but it's a little different when you yeah. tell them about that. Yeah, well, it's it's the same in business, too, man. You know, I, I say it like this. And I First of all, how did, were you scared to come to class? Oh, absolutely. Because I was. I got guys like you in there, man. <laughs> but listen, when I first came in there, I'm looking at everybody else. Well, you know, I couldn't even, I mean, bro, if you go to class, man, like, it's serious. I mean, I couldn't barely jog. And I was, I'll give that to Evolution MMA. When I was embarrassed because I couldn't do all the exercise, no one looked at me silly. No one shied away from me when it was partner time. People actually, hey, man, no. I'm like, hey, man, I'm sorry. They would tell me, don't say sorry. It's all good. Do what you can. That empowered me to keep going, right? Mm -hmm. But what really helped me was getting those one-on-ones. And I tell people this. The one-on-ones are no different than the class. You're doing 200 kicks. You're doing X amount of sit-ups. You're 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 going just as hard. But when you're in the class, Maybe a little harder. Yeah. But when you're in the class, you can hide. Yeah, you can't hide from you Cosmo. Can, you can't hide from Cosmo. He knows you're getting that 200 kick. He's getting those 200 kicks from you. When I'm partnered up with Bryce, we both look at each other and go, "Let's do yeah. 170." <laughs> you know what I mean? So we, we do 170 instead of 200. Then 200 knees. We'll do 150. And by the end of the class, we don't. We only did 70. We oh, only did 70. Five uh, percent. But, when, but, but huh? when you do the one-on-ones, when there's that accountability, it's the accountability. Same reason why I hire guys like you in my business. Hire guys, Bryce. I hire Bryce to come in and see my blind spots in my financials. Mm-hmm. I know how to do it. I teach other people how to do it. Mm-hmm. But just because I know how to do it, don't mean I always accountability. Do it. Yeah. And, and that's the truth. And every successful CEO has somebody. You have somebody in your life. A lot of life. people, man. My mom, I hired my mom. I told my mom this morning I woke up. Great leaders are uplifting and inspiring. <laughs> Don't be rude this morning. Make sure not yell. I'm like, <laughs> mother, not <laughs> at 745 on Monday morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's yeah, I, I mean, I, I literally, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you have to eat what you that what you ask for yeah amen 
And I think it's important, man, because it's it's easy to you know it, it goes back to when we were kids at saying do. So as how I much say, weight did you lose? I'm at like 47 pounds. Damn, yeah. bro. Yeah. But I'm also getting, you know, leaner, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, as far as muscle. And, and more stuff. muscle and oh, more yeah. confidence. And, and every time I see, you know, it's it's cool. It's encouraging, too, because you see people and they're like, dude, like, you we look, didn't see each other for a while. You're like, bro. Yeah, I know. You keep, you keep getting more. And that's sort of like the beautiful thing about it is you're only just getting started, really. Because, yeah. I mean, when did you start training? About nine months ago. Okay, nine months. So yeah. for me, like... You know, it, the gains happen, but 12 months, 18 months, once it becomes like a consistent thing, yeah. then it's, I mean, it's consistent now. I'm not yeah. saying it's not, but basically it's just going to continue to yeah. get more evolved, dynamic results because oh, yeah. you're just stacking wins on wins on wins on mm -hmm. wins on wins. Yeah, it's easier to win. And I'm going to tell you what, man, since I've been taking care of myself, mm -hmm. I'm way more productive. Mm -hmm. I'm maximizing those times. Like, what do you think it does for your focus? Oh, it's it's huge, man. I mean, I used to start work. At, I would leave the house at five thirty and get home at seven or eight. I'm accomplishing the same stuff. I'm at the gym by nine. I'm not leaving the gym till ten thirty and still banging out my day and home at the decent hour. It, it, it's just because my focus is there. I'm not dragging it out. I'm, I'm maximizing my day and. And I think when you take care of yourself, I mean, even Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Why does he say as yourself? Because you can't love anybody until you fi figure yourself out first. You got to put your oxygen mask on first. Amen. Yeah. You, know? you can't help no one. And if there's breathe. no such thing as bad teams, only bad leaders, if you're not in good physical shape and you don't have energy, look, no big outcome comes from a low energy source. No. Do you believe that? Yeah, absolutely. Do you believe that you were having a hard time pushing your dreams up the hill, carrying extra, extra weight? Oh, 100%. And, and I mean, it, generating the energy, it's like your shoulders have to be bare, they have to be strong enough to carry the electrical. So Here's the deal. You know who suffered? My family. Yeah. That's who suffers because you give every, the energy you do have when you're unhealthy, mm -hmm. you're giving it to everybody. Mm -hmm. You're giving it to all your clients. They're getting the best version of you. Mm -hmm. You get home, you're done, you're tanked out. They get the crappy end of the stick. Yeah. I mean, it's not fair. No, it's not right. So... Look, guys, you owe it to yourself, man. If yeah. you're feeling some of these pains, to surround yourself with me, with John. John's going to be at the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. We're going to be addressing these issues. He's pumped up. He's bringing yeah, his man. wife. He's like, dude, yeah. I can't wait for her to see the whole movement, the community. Yeah, uh, Bryce is going to be there. Uh, there's going to be collaboration. Uh, hopefully, we can get him on a podcast and, and talk more about what's going on with uh, implementing traction process and helping home service contractors. Um, of course, you can reach John. How can they get a hold of you, John? Man, you can uh, find me at NaplesConstruction.net, and that's my website. Um, yeah, man, and it, my my office number and everything's right there. Or you can go on Facebook, John Huffman. Or your Instagram. Or my Instagram, yeah, John Huffman. Instagram, nice. too. Yeah. That's what's up. Hit him up. And more importantly, guys, uh, whenever you come to the Blue Collar American Dream Conference, realize that it's more about uh, lifting up your levels in all areas of your life than it is about making money. Because if come you on. take care of that then the rest will take care of itself. Mm. And I think it's important that we have uh, everyone that's watching this know that it's a family environment. And even in meeting John and Bryce and the people that I train with, do you feel like there's almost a family environment oh, as blue collar entrepreneurs, even within our gym? Yes, 100%. Uh, uh, like shared, as soon as I found out Bryce coached contractors, as soon as I found out you're a contractor, immediately there's synergy there. Oh, yeah, very like-minded. And so if you're watching this podcast, it's very uplifting to be around people like me, like John, and that's why we want you to be at the conference. So um, we look forward to seeing you. It's going to be at the Diplomat. It's going to be off the chain. And uh, you've got a big event tomorrow. Yeah, uh, man. Top Notch Producers. Um, yeah. Topnotchproducers.com. Um, su super, you know, super affordable dinner from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock, and we're giving a lot of value out, man. And that's what you got to do. Your network is your net worth. And a lot of contractors, they don't understand that if they can get in front of lots of groups of people, opportunity will follow. Yeah, and man. it doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, you know, hey, man. I like that. I'm stealing that. Network network is your net worth. That's, that's it. Good. That's, that's it, good. guys. Hey, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Comment below if you got any questions about interior remodeling sales, contracting sales. Man, John, this has been an awesome podcast. Appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, man, appreciate You're you. You're dynamic human being. Can't wait to hear you. Um, we're gonna have you at fight night. You be cool, ready. Man. Cool. We got something. We got. We got to have you bless the fighters. Make sure everybody makes it through. I'm down. All right, buddy. I'm down. We'll see y'all. All right, buddy. All right, thanks.